startup wasn't part of the vocabulary in 1892 when Arthur Baldwin Turner started a weekly journal of fashion and society called Vogue. But the concept of getting by with a little help from your friends was familiar to this Ivy League educated clubman. Arthur Baldwin Turner, a Princeton grad and a founder of the Grolier Club, launched Vogue in 1892 as a dignified, authentic journal of society, fashion, and the ceremonial side of life. Over time, fashion, for both men and women, was to occupy more and more space in this magazine created by and for the leisure class. But Vogue's niche appeal was the real draw for Cracker Jack publisher Condé Nast, who purchased it in 1909. Nast is credited with developing the then revolutionary concept of the special interest publication, which valued reader engagement over circulation. The magazine's animal-loving first editor, Josephine Redding, violently disapproved of the fashions of her day. Humps, Redding wrote. Women today are all covered with humps. Big humpy sleeves, humps on their hips, humps on their behinds, it's nonsense. To the modern eye, the corseted turn-of-the-century S-curve, or powder pigeon silhouette, can appear both torturous and impossible. The top and bottom halves of the body seem to be entirely independent of each other, only very tenuously connected by a minuscule waist. Nevertheless, the long, sinuous line dominated fashion for about a decade. The look was balanced by upswept hair and embellished picture hats that shaded makeup-free faces. The Vogue gentlewoman might not have struggled for her necessities in life, but she did contend with society's expectations about gender, her station in life, and the restrictions of dress. Her life was constricted, but it was not static, nor was it purely social. Designers dreamed up outfits for seemingly every conceivable activity. Sports were an important part of her life. She looked most modern of all in a stylishly foolproof combo of shirtwaist and skirt. Not only was the Vogue woman athletic, she was addicted to speed. The golden age of the bicycle roughly coincides with the debut of the magazine, and the Vogue reader was an early adopter of this newfangled contraption. She fell just as head over heels in love with the automobile. The magazine's interest in men's fashion was addressed in such regular columns like As Seen By Him and The Well-Dressed Man, and this was advertised as a point of distinction. The cover of the second issue was the first of many to feature a dapper man and woman 